Hello, everyone. We're here today to explore the Skills Integration Challenge that is uh, built into Chapter 2 of Cisco's Introduction to Networking class. Like many other packet tracer skill assignments, we have the addressing table at the top of the instructions, some objectives, a description of the basic scenario, and then the requirements. So you can see, as assignments build throughout chapters in the Networking Academy, the instructions actually become um, less and less detailed. The reasoning behind that is to, to build in you, the student, some more self-directed uh, behavior that you can interpret uh, basic requirements, and then you've learned along the way what to do to implement those requirements. So each uh, skills integration challenge may be minorly different for each student download, and by that I mean that your device names may differ and in fact, your IP addresses on devices may vary slightly, but the basic setup, the basic topology will be the same from interaction to interaction. It's just a way to mix it up a bit from student to student and also from download to download if you happen to do the uh, challenge more than one time. But the basic skills will be the same. So in this challenge, we need to uh, use a console connection to access, access each switch. Uh, what you're gonna find out if you try to click the device like I'm doing here, you'll get this message that the configuration is locked. So we can't open up the panel as uh, sometimes is uh, capable of doing with uh, many packet tracers. So what do you need to do? You need to go down here to your connections and grab a console cable and use one of the existing PCs and use its RS-232 interface and connect up to the console on the switch. So now if I go to the de desktop and the terminal, we can check no parity, one stop it, that should be proper. And when I connect, I now have access to that switch. So we see that we're uh, connecting through the console cable from the PC to the switch. And the look and feel of the interface now is, you know, basically identical to what you were um, confronted with when you got the CLI from the device itself. So let's go on and uh, remind ourselves about what uh, we need to do next. We need to name our switches. Uh, we can, let's go through class, the class A switch in this example. Again, your switches might have different names. Follow your set of instructions uh, regarding naming. So here we are. We're at the switch. What do we need to do? We need to enter privileged exec mode and we need to configure the terminal. It's the host name command for naming and the name is class A. 
And even though those instructions went on to uh, give the Class A and Class B switch instructions, uh, let's go through one entire switch and all its configurations, and then we'll move on to the second one. So we want to use R4, X, E3 for the password for all lines, and C4, A, J, A for the uh, secret password. So back to configuration, we'll want to do the lines and password of R4 X E3. Don't forget the login command to activate. Then go back to the config. Make sure we get the line console line. Set that password to R4 capital X E3. Log in there. And then what is the last thing we need is the enable secret. With C4 small a capital J a and that is the password configuration we need to encrypt all clear text passwords we should remember this from one of the past packet tracers uh, we want to be at the config prompt so i went out too far here on my exiting the tiers. So I want to go to config terminal, right? Or config T. And then service password encryption. Whoops. Let's spell things correctly. That's one thing about a computer. No room for little variations and error. Things have to be correct. So there we have now encrypted the clear text password. We want now a uh, banner, a message of the day banner uh, with just the word warning. Configuring addressing for all the devices according to the table given above, and save all our configuration. Okay, so when we say configure addressing for all the devices according to the table, that means both these virtual LAN interfaces on the switches, and we need to set up the network interface cards on the PCs as well. So let's do that message of the day banner and then get on to addressing. So banner, MOTD, and then the word warning in between some kind of delimiting character. Okay. And then let's move on to the interface, VLAN 1, and we need to put an IP address on that VLAN 1 of the Class A switch. Let's check the addressing table. It's specified as 172.16.1.1. And a 255, 255, 255, zero mask. Remember, 
the interface is not active until we enter what command? No shutdown. So no in front of things in Cisco land usually implements the reverse of whatever the command was. So no shutdown means bring it up. Okay. So now our VLAN one changes its state to up. You might have to hit the enter key one more time to get the command prompt back. Now we've basically done everything necessary on that class A switch, except for saving the configuration. So let's go back to our privilege exec prompt, and we need to copy running config to the startup config. We can just accept that destination file name as correct. And now our configuration is changed and saved on the class-a switch. We can now exit this device. And we want to move on to the class B switch. Remember, we're going to do this through the console cable. So I'm going to grab that same cable, come over to the second switch device here, and connect to console. So now when I open up that same PC again and its terminal and click OK, I have now the generic switch prompt for the class B switch. I need to use enable to enter that privileged mode. I need to config terminal or config T. And now I can put the host name of class B on that switch and move on with the remainder of the requirements, which will be to put a password on each of the lines, the VTY and the console lines. So we have the R4 capital X E3 login to activate it. Move back to config, line console zero. We're going to use that same password on the console. And we need to do an enable secret password. And that one is C4AJA. Now, what else were we asked to do? We, we were asked to um, encrypt all clear text passwords. So that is the service password. If you forget what things might be, you can use the question mark and see that uh, password encryption happens to be the only option that matches. So I can actually just say service pass here and configure password encryption. The message of the day, we need to do that banner and the word warning is what we were recommended to use for the message of the day. And then addressing based on the addressing table. 
So at this point in time, we need to do the interface VLAN 1, and we should double check our addressing table for the class B switch, and it's 172.16.5.40. Okay, so we will be putting an IP address of 172.16.5.40 with a subnet mask of 255 three times dot zero. Remember, no shutdown to bring up that interface and an extra enter key to get back to the prompt. Let's go back to the privileged main mode and copy our running config to start up config. I'm going to use the abbreviated version, copy run start, accept the default. Now we should be good with the switch configuration of the class dash B switch. But let's not forget, we have two PCs to configure as well. So let's do the student one PC, its IP configuration is 172.16. Yeah, I I stopped too soon there. So it's 172.16.550. So Be careful here, because naturally speaking, a 172 address is in what's called the class B address space, which has this subnet mask, but that is not what we are asked to do. So we have to change this third segment to a 255. Make sure you do that, or you will be getting errors. Okay, and the second PC, very similar. Let's make sure from the addressing table, this one's a 560. And again, we have to change that mask in its third segment to a 255. Okay. So at this point in time, we have finished all of the basic configurations, but we do need to verify connectivity between all our devices. How do we do that? Well, we can ping, right? So the first PC should be able to talk to the second PC. And it looks like we have a perfect round trip with four packets sent, four received, and no loss of data. And we can also go back to our activity and see that we have completed 90 out of 90 tasks. And we can even click check results and look at our assessment items to make sure that every single item has a green check mark and you're good to go. So you should be able to go through your challenge and even if with some minor addressing changes, 
be successful. All right, great job.